It is Monday, October 23rd, about 20 past 8 in the morning, and it is a very frosty and chilly morning here. Uh, you can see my car, the frost on the windshield there. Um, we also have frost on the grass, and the temperature at the moment is m minus 1. Uh, it's supposed to warm up to a high of about 13 degrees. Um, so I'm very, very happy that I did get the fish moved indoors um, last week and you would have seen that in my uh, two recent videos. They're all inside, nice, cozy and warm. Um, the pond, because it is such a large volume of water and in ground, is completely ice free at the moment, which is great. Uh, my project for today and maybe into tomorrow is to kind of decommission all the filters and everything for the winter season. That's going to be something I will kind of bring a video or put a video together just to show you what I'm doing in that regard. As I said, very, very chilly at the moment. Um, the trees are losing their leaves. You can see some of them on the water here. You can see some of the colors have changed on some of the other plants along here as well. So I'm hoping to get things shut down completely. Um, the returns you see in the back of the pond there are connected to the upflow and the shower. Um, I've turned that off and drained that already. Um, the easy pods are running, although you can't see the kind of water movement because those returns are underwater. What I will do is, as I'm going through the process of shutting everything down and disconnecting the filters, etc., for the winter, I will do a video section um, to let you see just what is going on in that regard. So a very chilly morning out here, as I said. I'm supposed to warm up, thank goodness. Um, so on that note, I'm going to head inside and get myself a cup of coffee and wait till things warm up a bit later on. And then we'll get out here and get everything um, settled and shut down for the winter. So I will be back with you very shortly. Stay warm, all. Okay, I'm going to get down into the filter pit now, so if you just bear with me for a moment while I do that. Okay, down in the pit, and what I'm going to do now is uh, I'm going to turn off the pump. As I said, I did have it running to keep the water circulating so it wouldn't damage the UV units. But obviously, as soon as I start to disconnect them, if the water is running, uh, I'm going to have a very big mess. So I'm going to turn that off now. The pump uh, that supplies the, the main water return to the pond is now off. And I'm going to just unplug it just to keep it on the safe side here. Now, the only thing that is plugged in in here at the moment is the electric fence, and that's more just to kind of keep critters out. Um, so, I'm going to get that off of there. I also have the uh, sump pump plugged in so that, that will. Uh, will allow me to do the cleaning and take the, uh, the wastewater away once the filters are, are going there. So what I'm going to do now, it's a very simple process. I use uh, the rubber connectors on here, kind of like a rubber boot. Um, these are what they call a mechanical one. You may or may not have those in the UK, I'm not sure. They have like a medical collar on them, or sorry, metal collar on them. And an assembly with a 5 16 nut driver. It's undone pipes. Well, there will probably be a little bit of water leakage because it's going to be water in the, the line itself here. And the same on this one. And the nice part about this setup is if I run into any kind of issues, the sea units itself, they do come off fairly easily. So that side is loosened. I just have to loosen the top here a bit as well. Both of them. Uh, simple connection. In there, and with that, should be off. So I'm just going to be using a little more here. Oh, there we go. It's caught on the lip of the uh, filter picture. Okay, so 
that one is now off. And we'll let the water drain out. These will be taken into the house and cleaned to get ready for next uh, next season. Put away for the winter. So that's poured for that one. I'm going to do the same on the, the other one now. And as you can see by the pipe here and here, uh, if the pump was running, uh, that would be spewing water all over the place. And I definitely don't want to be standing out here in 6 degree weather getting myself uh, soaked in cold water. The two pipes that you see here, uh, these two are the lines that I put in this year to accommodate the return from the pump uh, because of sealing off the midwater ones last year because of my leak. So what I'm going to do now is put my phone down so it doesn't get dropped into the pond, uh, along with another uh, nut driver I have here just in case. And I'm going to get here now and just uh, uncouple these. Again, they are using the, uh, the couplers on here. Very similar, as I said, to the rubber boots that you use there. Okay. I love using them because they're so easy. So there we go. One pipe is off. And the other one will be in a moment. And the reason that I'm taking these off is in well, three or four months, hopefully not too much for that, the pond is going to be completely covered in ice. And that ice will come up, you know, probably a good six to eight inches. Uh, the pipes will definitely be frozen in there and potentially damaged, and I don't want that to happen. So from that side of things, those have been disconnected. I'll just move the, uh, the camera around here just to kind of show you done. And again, I apologize if it's caught by the tripod. You can see now where the pipes have uh, disconnected there. So that is done now. And what I will be doing, as I said in just a moment, is getting uh, back into the pit here to get the Easy Pods cleaning. Um, so the first one I'm going to uh, get started in just a moment. What I'm also going to do is, once that's bubbling, is the on this side, my moving bed filter and my pump chamber there, they will be emptied of water and the pumps will be removed. So I'm going to get in and I'll get that going now. Uh, again, get the Easy Pod going to start it bubbling so I can do a thorough cleaning before I. Um, dump it for the final time for this year and then I will do the second one in about a half an hour's time as well so hang in there if you would and I will uh, again climb down into the pit get that started and then we'll dump the, uh, the water 
in the two barrels so I can get uh, the pumps removed. And again, they will be taken into the house thoroughly clean and then stored away indoors for the winter so that there's no frost damage or freezing damage to them. Alright, I'm back down in the filter pit. Um, this is a barrel that has the pumps in. I'm going to drain first. Now what I have to do is, there's a valve down here, which feeds a line directly from the bottom drain into the, this barrel. And then there's the other two lines there, the big 4-inch ones that come from the Easy Pod filters. So I'm going to close the one down here so it doesn't feed any more water in there. It's kind of a filter bypass. Um, in case the filters get clogged, there's still water flowing through there. So I'll turn that one just to close it, and then I will start the draining, and I'll show you that in just a moment. Change hands here. Okay, that valve is now closed. And then down here is another uh, slide valve you can see. That one is now open, and you can see the water going into my sump pit there. Um, there's an automatic sump pump in there, which will pump that water out uh, just down to waste. And then I will also drain down what's left in the moving bed. Because they are connected through a, a large non-return valve here, as the water in this chamber goes down, this one, um, the water here is also going to drop. The water won't flow backwards from this one into that one, but of course it does naturally flow into that barrel. So that's going to go on for just a few moments while I do that. Then I'll get these pumps out. And the easy pod here, um, not bubbling quite the way I hoped it would. So I'll try and get a bit more, uh, just get a bit more water in there just to get things going. And uh, there you can see I'm adding a little bit more water from the pond, so that'll get things moving reasonably soon. Okay, so you've all seen Easy Pods before. As I said, once the water tops up in here a little bit, um, that will start to, uh, to bubble much more quickly. You can see it starting to happen on that side there. So I'm just going to put the camera down again for a moment. I will show you once I have disconnected the pumps and taken those out. The water is still draining from the, the two barrels here. It's almost done. You can kind of hear it just kind of starting to ease off in the volume right down there. Um, any water that's left in there, um, I will get in with a shop vac and vacuum that out over the winter, or for, prior to the winter, I should say. And the pumps, both the one that was on this line and the one for the main line here, both have non-return valves on them. Um, I have uncoupled this one, you can see there. Um, 
So that will free up the pump down at the bottom. And then that will be uh, taken out, as I said, taken apart, cleaned, etc. And then that's my other pump down the bottom there. This is the non-return valve here. I'm going to take that off in a few moments as well. Take the pump out, as I said, get everything cleaned. And make sure that the uh, it's ready for putting away for the winter. Um, the pipe work that goes, this pipe work that's on this pump, the one that goes down there, uh, will also be coming off with the non-return valve and will be taken into the house to be cleaned and that's where it'll stay for the winter along with these sort of internal components of the valves so I know that they're going to be good for next season. So I will just kind of pause things in the video there, uh, let my easy pods bubble and clean and then I will drain those as well. So I will get back with you shortly with some more of the video. The pumps have now been removed from my pump chamber here. And as you can see, there's a little bit of water down there. I will get the shop vac and uh, get that out um, today or tomorrow. And that's the pumps sitting there. And they will be, as I said, taken in and cleaned. You can see that one portion of the uh, check valve, or the backflow valve there is still on it. So those will be, um, as I said, cleaned and reassembled. Uh, when the time comes, the components will be clean so they'll be ready for the spring. And what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to get out of the pit. So you can bear with me for a second here. And the last thing I'm going to do at the moment, and then take a break while the easy pods finish up, is to remove this pipe here. Um, this is the one that has the return, uh, well, two returns there and on this side, that comes from the shower tower. So it goes through the upflow filter, through the shower, underground, and into this pipe. And again, this is a, a rubber connector down here, a 3 to 2 inch. So I'm going to take that off. I'll take the pipe off, and that will allow it to drain. And then the line, which actually runs underground, uh, that you can see the sort of connection part here, um, that's going to be taken apart as well. And I will use my blower to... Uh, Purge that line of water also and then it gets capped off for the winter so that no water gets in causing any leak issues. So that's going to be the next um, step. I will do that in a few moments. And then the one final one that I will be doing sort of with respect to the plumbing that's kind of physically attached here to the pond is to disconnect uh, my float valve here so that it does not freeze over the winter and remove the uh, the noise arrestor there from the water flow itself and again that line I have a small air pump and that I will be using to blow any water out of that line and then it too will be capped off so that any of the lines that are underground going into the pond uh, will be completely empty of any water just have air in them and that will prevent any issues you know hopefully with uh, leakage or anything like that because of frost uh, I do apologize a little bit again for the noise. Uh, as I said, I am fairly close. You can just see it. See it going by over there, I think. Yeah. Fairly close to the uh, executive airport here in Oshawa. We get a lot of flights back and forth over the house. Uh, so it can be noisy out here at times. So with that said, as I said, I'm just going to uh, let these sit here for a few moments to kind of drain and dry off a little bit in the uh, the sun that's come out now for us and then I'm going to get back out and uh, start disassembling a few bits of pipe in the pit itself so that I can uh, cap off the, the bottom drain once I have used the, the blower to clear that as well and I will show you once I get that done It's Wednesday, October 25th, just past 10 o'clock in the morning. It's a much warmer day. We're already at about 16 degrees uh, compared to the zero temperature we had there a couple of days ago. Um, very overcast. We are expecting rain on and off today, but temperature-wise, I just want to get out and finish um, the pond closing procedure. So I'm going to run through that in a few different segments. I will show you as I go. Um, what I have done is I have capped off, I'm just going to see it there, this is the line from my pump here that feeds the air dome and the bottom drain. So what I do is I 
pump air through it, um, close the valve here to sort of shut the airflow off, and then put a solid cap in there for the winter. That will prevent any water from leaking back up the pipe and potentially freezing. Uh, I haven't had any issues in the past, thank goodness. Hopefully that's not going to be an issue this year again due to the procedures that I'm going through here. Um, you'll also see um, some bits and pieces of pipe and stuff I've got sitting on top of the easy pods here. Um, what I have done, and I will get into a bit more detail in a few moments, is I have disconnected the supply line from the bottom drain, which is here. It's closed off with that um, gate valve. Um, that's the line that was feeding the first filter and then going over to feed the second one here as well. So that's now taken apart um, to allow me access down there to blow the air out of that line and I will show you that um, in the video in just a few moments as well. So what I'm going to do now is, um, you can see there's my ladder for getting in and out of the filter pit. Um, I had to remove that to get to the air down here. So I'm going to uh, get out, get a couple of things sort of sorted um, outside the, the pit here. And then I will get back in and uh, show you what I have been doing. And just before getting back down into the filter pit, I just wanted to show you something else I have just done. Uh, you recall I mentioned earlier in the video about taking the automatic float switch out of the pond here to prevent um, freezing of it over the winter and any damage. So as you can see, I have done that. Um, it goes down there. What I've done has been disconnected. Um, this is a water hammer arrestor. Um, it does prevent a bit of um, back pressure on the pipes in the house when it shuts on and off. So that's off, that's gonna go in the house for the winter. Um, I'm using my handy little air pump here. I have closed off, or uh, pumped the water that was in the line out, and I've capped that off here for the winter. Um, that's more just to sort of prevent rain or anything getting in there and causing any issues over the winter. So I'm gonna move over now and uh, show you one more thing and then I will uh, get the main pump going to get the air sorted out. Um, what I've done as well is the, you can see the pipe here. This is the one that was the two return lines from the upflow filter that went over the wall um, there and just over on this side. Um, that has been disconnected from the supply line which is down there. You can see there is still water in there that line I'm going to uh, blow out in a moment as well and I will cap that off again to prevent any water getting in there over the winter and um, that will be done from inside the filter pit. Um, you can see I've taken that was the, the main feed line there coming into it right here. Um, so I'm going to put the uh, my blower on the line that you can see just in the camera view here now and that will blow all the water out of there. To make sure that line stays completely empty for the winter. So I'm going to uh, just put the camera down again for a moment. I'll show you the blower I'm going to be using and then I'll get things set up and uh, get underway. This is a blower that I'm going to be using to blow the air both out of the bottom drain and out of that line I just showed you. Um, it is a, a spa blower um, generally used for hot tubs, Although many of you that have seen the, uh, the bead filters, um, such as the K1 Advantage, that Evolution Aqua Cells, um, they have a blower similar to that mounted on them to help clean the media. Um, I use this one in order to clean the, or push the water out of the pipes, again, to help prevent um, any likelihood of freezing in the winter. Um, the reason the pipe here is so long and have the elbow on it uh, is actually two, two reasons. First one is to allow me to attach it to the bottom drain um, and keep the, the uh, motor upright to prevent water damage. And second reason I have the long pipe here again is when I open the valve in the filter pit to connect this, um, I don't want water rushing in and then coming up and blowing out the motor. So that's why the uh, the pipe on there is as long as it is. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set the camera up on the tripod facing into the pond so you'll see when the pump is turned on you'll see the water coming or at least the air blowing through the uh, the pond bottom drain 
up to the surface, meaning there's no water left in that pipe. Um, I'm going to do it that way because by virtue of the, the weight of the motor and where I have to work with it, and because it's only me here, I can't get in the pit, um, hold the motor, get everything running, get out of the pit, and show you the air bubbling out as well. So I'm going to set this up on the tripod. I will get the recording going uh, once I have the pump and everything hooked up inside the pit. And then we'll just show you and then when the bubbles come up, I'm showing that there's no water left in the pipe. I will cap things off and down in the pit and I will kind of show you how that's done as part of my process as well. Just before I start the blower going to blow the water out of that bottom drain line, just wanted to show you the hookup here. So there's a blower there just resting against that pipe at the moment. I will be holding it when I plug it in though just to offer some stability for it. Uh, you can see it goes down the pipe that I showed previously through the various fittings from 2 inch to get it up to the 4 inch to fit the bottom drain and this is the main valve from the bottom drain. So what I will do is uh, plug the pump, the blower in. Once it starts, open the bottom drain slowly to allow the water that's in the line to get forced out. Uh, let it run for the few moments and then close that valve to stop any water returning through the line and turn the blower off. And then I will cap the line down here and I will show you that once that's done. So I'm going to hook the uh, camera onto the tripod now, get it over so you can see the air coming up through the, the pond just to indicate that there's no more water left in that line. And then, as I said, I will turn things off and get back to capping it and then show you that afterwards. Okay, so as you have just seen, you saw the volume of water coming out there. Uh, that has thoroughly purged that line from the bottom drain. Um, this is something I would not ever do with the fish in the pond. Um, that would potentially just freak them right out. So I'm going to take the camera off the tripod here, take you back into the filter pit, and then I will get the cap put on that pipe, and I will show you how that looks in a few more. cap is now on the pipe, the valve there where the pump was connected, you can see it right here. Um, we call them an end cap, I believe in the UK you call them blanking caps. Um, same difference. So the valve will now stay closed for the winter. Um, this will really prevent any air backflow. So the line from the valve here through this pipe right through into the bottom drain is now completely void of water or at the least there's you know just droplets of it in there and it'll stay that way for the winter. Uh, the next thing I'm going to do now is um, take the fitting off of here. This is the four to three inch that I was using on the valve below. This is the three inch coupler here will then be connected to this pipe from the um, upflow filters and that will blow the water in that line out that I showed you previously in the video. Then that line will be capped to prevent any snow or rain from getting in there. And then that is pretty much it for uh, the winter clothes down here. Um, I am going to um, just double check that I have everything kind of the way I want it for the winter months. And I know it's a bit of a mess down here, but I won't be getting back in or out of the pit for any length of time for any reason uh, once this is done. Uh, the last thing on my list to do 
will be to take these two air pumps, um, just disconnect them from the supply lines here, and take them in the house for the winter. I don't like to have them out here freezing and the diaphragms getting, you know, potentially damaged because of the cold or anything. And I will be doing that. Uh, so that's something I'm not going to bother to record. It's just a simple matter of unclipping and just, you know, pulling them off, taking them in the house. So I'm going to do the final kind of pipe clearing here um, just to get that water out of there. This one I'm not going to cap here because it do get a little bit of moisture to kind of drain through. Um, the one over beside the pond that I had shown you earlier that has the water in it there, um, as I said, that'll be capped to prevent any water from getting in. The upflow filters um, have been drained. The valve is open. That's the um, slide valve you see right there. And that's done. The easy pod are all drained down with the exception of a tiny bit of water at the bottom. And I'll get out here with my wet dry vac um, a little bit later on today or tomorrow morning just to get that uh, drawn out of there. The same on my pump chamber. <clears throat> and that'll be it for uh, the winter pond shutdown. So on that note, I'm going to uh, just put the camera down. I'm going to get the uh, blow this pipe out here. I'm going to find a cap for it. I know I've got one somewhere, but I'll get that taken care of today because we are expecting potentially more rain, although it has started to clear up a little bit, which is nice. Um, so I'm going to take care of that. And then I will just bring you a quick uh, overview again of the fish downstairs to let you know how they're doing. And we'll be back shortly. The one thing I did forget to mention a moment ago is my little ice breakers, I call them here. Um, what these are, these are a little contraption I made out of uh, swimming pool noodles or little floats that kid use in their pools in the uh, summertime, connected to a five gallon gas can. Now this gasoline or petrol can uh, is brand new in as much as the only thing it's ever had in there is water and um, some pea gravel. And you can just see Lucky checking it out here. It's uh, his first time to see these. What I do with these is I'm going to put some uh, a bit of water in there as well. It's primarily filled with pea gravel to give a weight. I'm going to add water to eliminate all the buoyancy. And then these get lowered into the pond. The float portion will come up to the surface, so when the ice forms in the winter, um, they absorb some of the pressure that the ice creates, so it, not, it is not pushing against the sides of the pond, causing any damage to the first course of block work there. So I'm going to pop those in now, and I said something I cannot do um, one-handed because of the weight of them once they, uh, they get there into the pond, uh, but once they're in place I will uh, do a quick little snippet of it here so you can see that. So I will be back uh, with that in just a few moments. Alright, my ice buffers, as I've decided to call them as opposed to ice breakers, are now in place. Uh, you can see the, the gas can at the bottom there. Again, I filled it with water as well as the pea gravel to get the weight and prevent any buoyancy. So that's holding the first um, set of floats there. And then the one on the other side, and I'll just walk around here to let you see that one as well. Um, again, there's a can down the bottom, again, just filled with the water and the pea gravel. You'll notice the floats on this one are deeper down in the water. That will accommodate um, any ice buildup um, as it starts to freeze and as we get more rain, etc., over the next uh, month or two going into the, the winter months. The water in the pond is definitely going to rise, and the one on that side will then take care of. Uh, added pressure from any ice as it gets deeper. And you will notice, um, I've done on both of them here, um, they're tied off to the side. Um, the reason for that is to make it easy for me to pull them out in the spring. Uh, they're definitely not moving anywhere in this pond over the winter. I'm not worried about that. Uh, but rather than trying to get a hook or anything down there in the spring, it's easier just to haul them up with the string. So on that note, I'm going to go um, in the house, just do a quick uh, little shot of the indoor pond for you, just to show you how the fish are doing down there, and then I will get things posted um, to YouTube. And just a quick look here at Lucky, pretending he's a mountain goat. 
I'm getting a little bit of water on top of the, uh, the tank here from the rain earlier today. He's decided this is a good place to go. So I'm going to pop in, get a picture of the, uh, the koi, and I will be back shortly to end the video. All right, I am down in the, uh, the basement, uh, the indoor pond. You can see them just kind of cruising around here. They haven't had anything to eat yet today. They'll be getting that a little bit later on. Uh, they're doing well. Um, sturgeon, you can just kind of see the short nose there, bobbing along the top, looking for some water. Um, he will get fed, he and the other one will get fed soon. And I said, these guys are always looking for water, doing really, really well down here. The move, I'm sure they're not happy because of the space difference, but uh, they've done very, very well. Um, as you can see, the tower shower is running well. Um, this one is running well, my barrels here. Yeah, lots of air going in. What I did do since the um, last video when I showed you about moving the koi indoors is I have increased the um, dial feed on here. So this one, which was a static bed, um, is now a moving bed. Um, this was the original moving bed in here. And then that's my static, sorry, that's my static there for the mechanical side. I am looking to uh, change or upgrade um, the mechanical side of things and just get a bit more mechanical filtration in here for the fish. Um, the bio I know is probably the most important, but I want the water clear so I can see them. I may or may not move uh, this Mayawasi 5000 here onto the, the main pond. It's the one I use for quarantine tank if needed. I do have a couple other filters I could set up on the quarantine tank that would do a you know, pretty good job. Not as good as Uwasi, but certainly a good job for limited time if necessary. Um, and this one, if I do install it on the other one, will give me more uh, mechanical filtration for sure. So I'm going to end the video there. I know I keep saying that, but this time for real. Um, thank you again for watching. If you have any comments or questions, please feel free to, uh, to let me know in the comments below. Would always appreciate a like and subscribe if you are so inclined. Your support is very, very much welcome. And on that um, note, the video is going to end here. Thanks for watching, everybody. Stay warm, stay safe.